Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking about where bass go in the summer. And then once you've found those fish, how do you catch these summertime bass? Summertime is a really fun time to be on the water. Especially in early summer, fish are really active. They're aggressive, they're willing to chase. In some situations, they really like to school up together. So if you can find that situation, it can just be fish after fish after fish. Summertime is awesome. But there are some challenges as well. The fish have made some serious moves since springtime and it's really easy to lose track of them. A lot of people don't understand summertime movements. They don't understand where the fish have gone and they just collapse. They never really get back on a solid pattern. Don't be that guy because make no mistake, there are guys on your lake, whether your lake has grass, whether it's deep, whether it's shallow, clear, muddy, whether you're in a river or a lake, somebody on your fishery is crushing them and it can be you. So this time of year, the biggest thing to understand, and we've covered this before, the biggest thing to understand is that the fish have split, okay? After the spawn, bass head two directions. There's a group of fish that like to stay shallow and they'll stay shallow all the way through the fall. There's a whole nother group of fish that head back out to offshore structure, to deep water. They just prefer to live deeper for whatever reason. Those fish are a whole different animal. So what I wanna do today is I wanna talk about where you should go looking for fish in your fishery, whether you're on a highland reservoir, a lowland reservoir, uh, a natural lake, ponds, creeks and rivers. Let's talk about where you can find those fish and then at the end we'll just touch on baits really quickly. But the big thing to understand here is that early summer bass are super aggressive. They're willing to chase. Late summer they get more lethargic so they want to be in areas where feeding is easy. That's number one. So I'm not even gonna break it down by type of fishery this time, I don't think. Even though I just said I was, I don't think I am. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna break down shallow, separate from deep, separate from current, okay? If your fishery, let's just talk shallow on all fisheries. The bass that stay shallow, if your fishery has no grass or very little grass, those shallow fish are going to orient to cover in a big way. Okay, they are gonna hold cover. First thing in the morning, shadows on the water, low light, they're gonna get up, they're gonna feed aggressively. But as soon as that sun starts to get overhead, those shadows start fading. If there are some shadows, they'll go right to them. Uh, whether that be up under trees on the bank, whether that's docks that they can get up underneath, anywhere that they can get in a shadow, they will. If there's no overhead cover, they'll be right up against a piece of cover, up against a stump, a lay down, a rock, whatever. But there are some fisheries that literally have no cover. Those places that just seem like a barren wasteland, those fish will back out just far enough to get to the color line, to get to where they feel safe. That might be four feet, six feet, 18, 12 feet deep, right? It, it could be anywhere depending on water clarity, but they're going to back out just far enough that they feel comfortable. There's nothing there, it's just that the light isn't penetrating quite as far. Wherever that depth is, you'll find those fish lined up on that line all the way around your lake. It's amazing, they'll pull out of that cover or they'll pull off the bank once the sun gets up high and they'll sit right at that exact depth all over the place. If your water clarity changes, if it gets muddier, they'll, that line will be shallower. If it gets clearer, that line will be deeper. But those shallow water fish in lakes with very little cover, they just slide with light penetration. Places that have a lot of cover, this is cool. I wanna be really specific today. I wanna to talk some details that maybe we've overlooked in the past. 
if you've got a lot of grass, a lot of cover, bass, even shallow water bass, split. They split again. There's two places that I look for them in a fishery with a ton of grass in the summertime. I do one of two things. I go to the farthest out grass. Maybe that's three feet deep, maybe that's nine feet deep. But the fish, the biggest fish, will take the, the most solid outside pieces of grass and they will dominate them. So what I mean by that is if you pull into a bay and it's just a field of grass, find the outermost edge of the grass and then look for the sweet spots, either points in the grass or the outermost clumps that are solid. The fish, the big fish will dominate those key hunting spots. That's where they'll be. They'll be fish throughout, but the big ones will be in those places. That's one place. The other place that I go look for them is all the way in. What I mean is in a grass fishery, you can run all the way dirt shallow. Now in some places you get on your trolling motor and you go to the inside of the grass line. It's 10 feet away from the outside. But I've also been on fisheries where there's that outer grass line and then there's half a mile of grass and then there's the shoreline. In that situation, we get up on pad and we run all the way across all that grass and then we set down and we get in that little inside edge because there's almost always a clear water edge right at the bank. There's a little gap between shore and where the grass wall happens. And then from there out, it's grass. That trough up there is crystal and they'll be in there. So let's recap. Shallow water fish, they're gonna be on cover. If your lake has good solid cover, they're gonna be on it. If it has overhead cover, they choose that first. If it has none of that, they use the color line. If it's a lake full of grass, they either take the farthest in or the farthest out. Now again, there's fish in all sorts. There's a fish here, a fish there everywhere. But I'm talking about if you wanna run a pattern, if you wanna know that you know that they're there, it's that simple. That's what I want you to focus on. So focus on backs of pockets, outer edges of grass. We're talking shallow bays, long coves, those places where that grass is going to develop first. Now, let's talk about those deeper water fish and then we'll talk current, okay? Deeper water fish, the fish that back out, they start after the spawn, they start bumping back out to that offshore structure. And I say deep, but I don't always mean deep. I mean the fish that come to outside structure. They tend to orient to hard bottom and rock if it's available. So you're going to find these fish back out on the main body of the lake. Highland Reservoir, we're talking about those outside points, like the points that divide creek arms. Lowland Reservoirs, we're talking about the ends of big offshore humps, of long points that come out, big long ridges. They'll be out there on the ends of the ridges. Uh, they take those key spots. If there's creek channel bends, they'll take the humps on the edges of creek channels. They set up on those really key locations. And again, these fish will live here for a long time. If you can find them right now, you can catch them for at least a month or two before they make any major changes. And that's why this information is so important because you can take it right now and you can run with it. Now, you're looking at your map of your lake. You see a dozen humps. How do you know which ones are the best? The ones that have faster transitions tend to be the best. So like a giant round hump out in the middle of the lake. If you're looking at your mapping, uh, a giant round hump and the lines showing depth are just evenly spaced. There's not a lot going on on that hump. They're less likely to be there than on a hump that's got maybe a rounded side and then a sheer side where those lines are stacked up real tight. You can see that side is steep and deep. They'll be on those unless those rounded humps have some sort of cover on them, right? If there's grass growing on top or there's brush growing on top, then they'll use them. But all things created equal, they're going to use the ones that have harsher transitions because there's better places to hide and to ambush from. Pretty simple so far, right? Uh, those fish too will also use the color line. 
out in the open water. And when I say that, I typically mean clear water places. Places where you've got 10, 15, 20 plus feet of visibility, where you can get a good solid color line out on offshore structure. Uh, you'll find them out on the perimeter of a hump or way out on the end of a point, quarter mile offshore, you can still see that line out there where it transitions from shallow water to deep water. It changes from sort of that brownish tan colored water to that deep blue water right there that line there's not actually anything there it's just where light penetration stops hitting bottom and, and lighting it up where that line is those fish will suspend out there because not all fish will be stuck to the bottom some are sitting on bottom some are sitting on those sweet spots looking up hunting others are suspended out on that color line also hunting now let's talk current now this can be a river, this can be a delta system, a tidal fishery. This can also be a lowland reservoir that just has flow passing through it. If you've got current in your system, 100% your bass use that current, 100% they do. And it's not always like river current. Now, I've been on lakes that have no river current in them whatsoever, but that wind will start blowing and you get big wind current. And the fish use it the exact same way. Fish stack on that current. In places where there's current, fish are going to use the first current break closest to the fastest water. That's the sweet spot. That's the best spot. So that may be where water's coming downstream and hits a bluff wall and turns. Fish will be stacked on that bluff wall, sitting behind little edges of the rock so they can ambush out into the current. I've seen it where it's uh, just on a lowland reservoir and you've got current on the lake and it's wrapping around offshore points. Offshore, uh, or I'm sorry, outside main lake points. So just a typical big main lake point, but that current's coming around it, right? Headed to the dam. Those fish will be stacked in that eddy. And when they want to feed, they push right up to the front of the line to feed. Uh, I've also seen it, I mean, I've seen it in so many different situations, but what it boils down to is if you've got current, they're there, but they're gonna tuck just out of it. Like a true river system, you're gonna see these fish pushed to the tops of those pools. When they wanna feed, pushed right to the head of that pool, right where that water's coming out of a riffle and dumping in, they'll sit right there in the first piece of cover, the first place that they can stay out of the current. It's literally the exact same as a giant reservoir that has flow, the exact same. Summertime is fun. Again, these fish are bunched up. These places I'm describing, I'm not saying that's the only place in a river that has a bass. I'm telling you that's the place <clears throat> that the big one will choose or that a school of fish will congregate. Because again, this time of year, this is when you can get those huge schools of fish all bunched up together. And if you get that situation, you get one to bite, you can get a second to bite. You can get a third, a fourth, a fifth, a 20th. You can just wail on them. It's incredible fishing. That, ha that happens on ledges, like on the TVA system. You've got the ledge. And there's ledges out on the edge of the channel, up and down the TVA. You've also got humps out in the river. They'll use the upper and lower end of those, but they're on those key structures all over the place, just feeding aggressively. Now, as far as catching these fish, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you guys watched our, our top five baits for June video, that was the Cliff Notes version of what to do. I'm just gonna fly through those same baits right now. And in fact, I'll link that video in the video description because I'm more thorough there. Uh, but I've got some key baits that I rely on. You can catch them on almost anything. When these fish are aggressive in early summer, you can flat catch them. Late summer is where it gets a little more complicated early summer i mean cranking is a major deal and depending on your situation that can be square belling up shallow on current points where that water's coming around those fish are sitting up there up tight it can also be deep cranking same exact situation but fish that are deeper different lakes different situations different bait but cranking is a major deal small swim baits small to mid-sized swim baits are a major player uh, I would absolutely recommend though, 
that you start with an underspin. I don't end up throwing an underspin every day. Some days they want the bare swim bait, no blade. But the vast majority of time, I throw it with that blade. The blade calls fish from farther. It also makes you stand out. There's a lot of bait fish. The bait fish are in big schools this time of year. If the bass are chasing bait and you throw a swim bait in there, you're one out of 10,000 shad. But you add a blade, it just creates a lot more presence. The shad tend to move away from you farther and you end up being a perfect profile swimming in the middle of an open bubble surrounded by bait. You're the one that stands out and they take a shot at the one, not at the school. So that's why I always start with a blade. I always throw an underspin first. Top water, of course, is a major player. Walking bait or popper. Uh, the farther we get into summer, the more time I spend with a walking bait versus a popper. But I love throwing top water. And then we're getting to, to number one, but a shaky head is a major deal for me. June bug. If I could only have one, it's always June bug this time of year. Major deal. And then last but not least, if I could only have one technique this time of year, it's that swinging jig head. Throwing that June bug creature bait. That is something that I just know day after day, I can catch absolute giants on. It works this time of year. It'll catch single fish. It will also get schools fired up. It's an amazing technique and it catches the really, really big ones. I don't know why the big ones are willing to eat it so consistently, but I'll pull up on a school of fish and pull the biggest fish out of the school on a wobble head. It's incredible. Guys, again, summer is an awesome time to be on the water. There's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of pleasure boaters out there. That stuff can be pretty brutal, right? You get out on a Saturday afternoon, it's like you're in a washing machine trying to drive down the lake. But if you can ignore that part of it, you can focus on the fishing. The fishing itself can be next level. You wanna be on the water this time of year. These baits will help you. Again, I'll link the baits in the video description, the exact baits, the exact colors. I'll also link that June video that we did because that's a lot more in depth on the baits and how to apply them to your fishing. But guys, fish in these key locations, regardless of the type of lake that you're on, will make a huge difference. That's how you can find a pattern and then once you've got a pattern, you just stick to that and run with it all the way through summer until it starts to fade. But by the time that starts to fade, we'll have a new video to show you what the next phase is gonna look like. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.